No, 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 these guys i'm loving this my buddy smoky hormel and the great kirk fletcher uh these guys are killing it and uh smoky take that vocal like you were doing before and we'll, we'll play it on and then we'll start talking to kirk a little bit well it must be rabbit because mink don't feel that way well, it must be rabbit because mink don't feel that way you can talk that talk, I don't believe a word you say. I got great big shoulders and I'm built like a trailer truck. I got great big shoulders and I'm built like a trailer truck. Come on, ride with me, mama, and maybe I'll change your luck. I want to go north, east. South, west, and which way as long as I'm moving, as long as I'm moving, as long as I'm moving, man, I just don't care. I play a group. So um, now I want to talk to you a little bit, Kirk, because uh -oh. you are, uh, uh, you know, did they let you out? Or you I know, just, right? Uh, I don't know. Is it parole? Or what is it? Paroles, I don't know. <laughs> well, let me tell you, uh, Kirk is one of the greatest players that I know, and he's like keeping the fire burning for all these young guys or younger guys that are into this stuff, and, um, you know, you're willing to share with all these people and tell people about all your influences and mm. that kind of stuff. He's going to have a show on the All Guitar Network. Mm -hmm. And um, awesome. I'm really excited about that. And I'm hoping that, Smokey, when you're out here, you know, you can do something for us. Sure. Maybe even back in New York, too. Sure. But Kirk has... Um, I've been on these Joe Bonamassa blues cruises with Kirk and my buddy Josh Smith, who's another monster player, who, uh, do you know him? Too? I've heard of him. Oh, I, man, I he's something else, man. He's really great. And, um, you know, it, it's really cool that, you know, on these blues cruises, he is ex he's exposed all these people who, um, you know, People come to see Joe, and then they hear these other people, and they fall in love with them, and mm -hmm. it helps everybody's career. Mm -hmm. And then you were out playing with Joe on the Three Kings tour, yeah, which I got was to really back cool. Up Joe, that's amazing because I, you know, doing my own thing, I don't get to play as much rhythm because I'm sort of the BB King kind of, you know, guy. <laughs> but like on that, you know, one of my favorite things is rhythm guitar, you know. So like to be able to go out and play a bunch of blues tunes that most of them I know, and I can just have fun. I mean, that's. Idea. And get better, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, the, you know, the the basis of the tune is in the rhythm. I mean, you know, I, a lot of these kids, they learn all these tricks, and uh, but what are you playing over? You know, well, you got you to gotta have that weave, you know, and that's what's missing. Like, I'm sure for Joe, it's great because you, you give him something to work against, and mm -hmm. that's, you know, that like Jimmy Rogers and Muddy Waters, oh, you know, it's like you want to have that weave. Yeah. That's, that's what makes Tucker it. Luther Tucker and Robert yeah. Jr., yeah, Robert Lockwood Jr. Sorry. Yeah, <laughs> I thought it was Robert Jr. Lockwood. I know. I thought it was <laughs> forever. Oh, and it really, was like, it's the other way. <laughs> I think so. I could be completely wrong though. But like, yeah, it's it's always been a, a two guitar yeah. thing, really. So 
Yeah. Interweaving is just, I love that so much. And even like, you know, like Betty Wright, oh, end up man. woman, that's you know, right. both parts, you know, all that's that stuff. That's right, yeah. It's like it. Those you know. parts just go together like, you know, hand in a glove, man. Yeah. You know, just killer, killer stuff. And you're living in Switzerland. Yeah. Man, that is, you know, that you just said, L.A., sorry, see ya, bye. Well, but, you know, I fell in love and it just happened to be with it girl that lives in Switzerland. She's Croatian, but she's lived in Switzerland her whole life, and, you know, we fell in love. Well, that's just how it is, and being a musician, you know. You gotta you go where kinda, love is. <laughs> love, love, love. It oh, makes well. me do foolish. <laughs> there it yeah, is. That's so. why, Hopefully that's it isn't foolish yet. Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, that's the best reason to go. Well, you won't <laughs> do for them. Yeah. yeah. So, um, you know, and uh, you moved to New York, yeah. Stormy. You know, what was yeah. that? Uh, uh, sorry, Smokey. Smoky. Uh, sorry, Stormy. Uh, Smokey. <laughs> Smokey. Uh, but you were looking for the storms, apparently. What's yeah, yeah. You like oh, snow or what's the deal? It was Stormy. Oh. It's funny. Uh, Thurston Moore from Sonic East, he always calls me Stormy. Oh, really? He, well, so maybe it was uh, <laughs> some kind of <laughs> guitar player. subliminal but, thing. But, yeah, I mean, you know, I moved for love, so yeah. that's what it's all about. Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, so, are you, are, so do you do, like... Do you have a band that you tour with yeah, there? Yeah, my play band with? is in the UK, and it's an organ trio kind of thing. Cool. And that well, we organ just whatever, player is you know. badass. The whole band Johnny is Henderson really, really cool. Wow. Yeah. So do you have a bass player, too, or is he? We just keyboard bass. bass. Awesome. Yeah. And you he know, kills we it. We do all kinds of tunes, though. I mean, whatever, you know. Cool. Because like, I just love that sound. It's so, like, more simple. You yeah. Know, just that. Yeah. I really like, you know, like, simple stuff. You know, like... I was all, I was even saying on the record on the liner notes like I love old country music you know like even it influenced my writing because it's so simple and direct and beautiful you yeah know? it's like telling you exactly how you know I feel about this you know like excuse me I got someone to kill Johnny <laughs> <laughs> I love that song <laughs> sorry it's kind of weird but. anyway but uh, yeah you know it just. That's it, organ trio, you know. Yeah. That's great. It's fun. And, you know, the thing is, when you're playing, you know, with a big band, you mm -hmm. can't really, you know, kind of veer to the left too far because yeah. you got everybody's got an arrangement, you know, in their head, and you got too many people, but, you know, with three pieces like that. Yeah, you can have yeah. happy accidents. Yeah. yeah. Like that, you know. And, it, and you, there's a lot of great organ players out there, so yeah. if they can... They can you really one, do it. Yeah, a good one that can follow you. I, I saw Pat Martino a couple of years ago with an organ trio. Mm. Let me tell you, that was one of the loudest. I mean, I've been to a lot of, <laughs> speaking of Sonic Youth, I've seen yeah. a lot of loud yeah. bands. That was louder than any Sonic Youth show. <laughs> really? I don't know what the hell he was, what happened, but he's playing through a giant Marshall stack. <laughs> That's really? awesome. And, I mean, he had amazing tone, but. It was crazy loud. <laughs> well, you know, a lot of the times, and you guys know this, when you're playing, you know, you're always at the mercy of the sound man, you mm. know. And uh, I remember um, there was a club out here in Reseda called the Country Club. And, oh, yeah. and uh, oh. they had a lot. I mean, I saw James Brown there. I saw Junior Walker there. I saw so wow. many people there. But I, I saw, uh, I went there and I saw um, Albert King. And um, the sound man, <laughs> yeah, but the sound man was mixing the bass drum like he had been doing a lot of oh. disco bands or something <laughs> before, and the bass drum was going boom, boom, yeah. boom. And I mean, it was like, yeah. it was wrong, you know, and, uh, you know, I could see that Albert was kind of uncomfortable. And that's the way it goes when you're playing sometimes. You just got to smile and kind of go with it because you never know what you might be faced with when you get a, the wrong sound man. Yeah, I yeah. mean, that's, that's a, a tough thing, you know, like if, in a rock band that's making enough money where they have their own crew and stuff, it's one thing. But, like, I mean, even some of the ble best blues artists, they can't afford to bring a sound person. They you know? can't afford to bring a band. Yeah, you know, most or, of them. or their, gear, their own gear, yeah. So, so yeah, it's a real challenge. You know who deals with that really well is uh, Mavis Staples band. Yeah. Those guys. My buddy is was singing yeah. there, um, Donnie Gerard. Oh, Donnie. So you know great. Donnie? Yeah. I, oh, yeah. I was playing with Donnie for a while. Oh, what a great cool. singer he yeah. is. Yeah. He, but, you uh, know, he, all those guys, Rick and Hodges mm -hmm, and Jeff, yeah. you know, they're all part of the, the old scene. But they know how to self-mix is right. what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, it's funny you brought him up. I didn't, hope I'm not cutting you off. But nope. I was just um, thinking about Rick, actually. And one of the we had played before Mavis. I can't remember the band. But anyway, make a long story short, 
I had like two amps, like two DeVille's and like this thing trying to, you know, hear myself outdoors. Rick goes up there, he's got his reissue Blackface Deluxe propped up on a chair and he had the most ginormous sound ever. Telecaster, Deluxe, and it was just, yep. you know, letting the sound do the work, you know, the system yeah. do the work yep. and it was amazing. You know, uh, um, uh, there's a band around town here called the Dirty Knobs and my buddy Jason oh, Sinead yeah. is oh, yeah. a great player yeah. and it's Mike Campbell. Mike Campbell, And yeah. both of them use this setup where they use a Princeton Reverb and a Tweed Deluxe together. And then the other side is the exact same setup. And this is like small amplification. And man, they both get like just such great sounds. So do they use, uh, so in other words, it's a dry, one dry amp and yep. one reverb. Mm -hmm. Somehow or other, they got it rigged together. You know, you got like the, uh, the Prince stereo. has got a little smaller speaker, so it's a little mm -hmm. brighter. And um, they're both low powered. And then the Deluxe has a 12. So, a yeah, give it a little more umph. And however they've got it rigged up, I mean, you know. That makes sense. Uh, wow. it, it really sounds great. They both get such fabulous sounds. And they're in control of their sound. And, you know, it's kind of, you know. It, it, they get a mix up on stage, I'm sure, that they can deal with. And then I'm sure they use good sound people, but, mm -hmm. you know, they really sound good. And it's good to hear because you don't get your uh, eardrums blown out, you know. And yeah. there's a club in town here that you played at, right, at the write-off room. I never played there yet, but I <laughs> like it a lot. Where is it? It's the new spot. Have you heard about that? The write-off room. No, yeah. I, that's where the Dirty Knobs play. Well, they probably will be playing there, but check this out. This buddy of mine, Bill Lynch, do you know oh, Bill? Oh, yeah, Bill, yeah. yeah. So, Bill, I used to work with Juke Logan, who was a yeah, great player, one, and but... uh, Wurlitzer is no longer uh, with us. You know, he was a really yeah, good player, awesome and I played guy. with him for a number of years. And, uh, you know, he's really great. But, um, it, you know, it's funny, because Bill was kind of like this kind of journeyman musician his whole life, and was making a living, but nothing, you know, big time. And he married this lady who was very wealthy, and they opened this club, and um, he pays the bands real well and takes no money back. The guy who runs the bar keeps the bar. And he's going to lose 250 to 500 grand a year. And that's why it's called the, the write off. Right. Right. Ah. That's genius. <laughs> so that's he is awesome. like a patron of the arts. He's able to <laughs> do what he always wanted to do. And he can bring in the people. He's got people like Dean Parks playing there, George Deering. Okay, he's I've got heard Billy about, Vera that's playing That's why I've there. heard about that. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Sebastian Steinberg, he was yeah, playing oh, with yeah. those guys. Yeah, he told it's, me about it. It's great. You know, oh, okay. so, and um, do you know James Cruz? You know, yeah, I play I'm with James sure. Cruz. And, the, uh, the shoeless Cruz. James, I That's call right, yeah. <laughs> great drummer. That's he would come in, he would, he would come in with, he'd have a, have a, most of his drum kit in a golf bag. I mean, his cymbals and however he rigged it up. But it was like the most bare bones drum kit. But yeah. he always could what play the New Orleans stuff, the <laughs> back line stuff. And really, you know, um, you know, just really, really great drummer. And Dave Jackson, you know, Dave? There's another For one. Another great bass player, yeah. Great bass wow. player and a great singer. Have you ever heard him sing? Yeah, yeah, he is. He's a great got singer. that really low voice, or super resonant. So every once in a while, wow. I give Dave a chance to sing, and it's really cool. So that's like the best kept secret in LA. Mm -hmm. If you're going to be in LA, and it's free. What what nights do those guys play? Um, you know? Well, do they, have a um, thing? It, they have like a Wednesday night. I know Teresa James plays there a lot, uh -huh. and on Sundays a lot of time the Bone Daddies play there. Wow. <laughs> and on Thursdays a lot, Bill Lynch plays with Mike Finnegan, who's cool. a great organ player, great organ. Um, mm -hmm. you know, played with Jimi Hendrix and all these people. Yeah. The great bass player, Abe Laboreal Sr., <laughs> oh, and, yeah. and James Gadsden, the oh, drummer. So that's the James, from, oh, that's yeah. James's game. The okay, Watts yeah. 103rd Street yeah, band oh, I and, go. uh, and Dyke and the Blazers gonna, and all I that kind of stuff. I think I'm going to go this week, actually. Yes. Yeah, so I'm um, just telling you guys, you know, the problem with telling you people this is that, you know, you're not going to be able to get near the door one of these days because it's free and it's some great entertainment. And, uh, and he keeps it. At a very low volume level in there, he Good. you know he doesn't yeah. want anybody mm -hmm. to kind of blow people's ears mm -hmm. out, yeah. and uh, cool. it's just a very cool cool setup and the sound is really good and it's, it's good fun. So tell me some other stuff that you've been doing there, Kirk, because I mean, you know, that I heard the band that you have in England and uh, in Europe and they're great and I heard them on the cruise and it was it was outstanding. But you're here, you were playing 
At the baked potato the other night. Yeah, uh, the other night I played at the baked potato with my old friends, Travis Carlton, Luke Miller, and uh, Vince Fawcett, guys from L.A. Um, but really what I'm trying to do is just become a, a artist more so, you know, just become a better singer, better guitar player, better songwriter, and all those things that, you know, the big boy stuff. Well, you're doing, you know? it. <laughs> you're doing it. You know, like it. So that's really where my head is, and just listening to a lot of music. And, and you're being, you're going to New York, and you're going to play with Anton. So I'm going to play right? with Anton Fig in New York at the Iridium. We're going to have a good time. Fantastic. Play play with, do you know Anton? I I've met him. I don't I don't know him well, but great he's drummer. great. Yeah, yeah. wonderful. And going uh, to Japan and going to play with the trio with Red Young on organ. I know Red. Red yeah, is great, Red man. Is Red great. is a fantastic yeah. musician, yeah. great piano player, great organ player. Mm -hmm. I was uh, I went uh, up to Washington and Washington State mm -hmm. and went to a concert and it was uh, um, uh, the Animals. The friend of mine said the Animals mm -hmm. are playing. I looked up there and it's Red Young <laughs> and Red is badass, <laughs> man. <laughs> that he is one of the greatest organ players. Yeah. Talk about. It. B3 guys, you know, yeah, and serious. just a great overall musician mm -hmm. all the way around. So, so I got that uh, going on, and this, I'm looking forward to it, playing some more gigs in the States, you know, just yeah. really looking forward to that. Well, you're an international phenom now, oh, man. I don't know about you know, all that. European guy and all that. International are, record collector. Uh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> are you uh, are you buying like you know slick suits and stuff like that? Are no. Being, are you like a European fashion icon? No, that would be me. You know me. I, I, I'm like a t-shirt guy. I wear my Hawaiian shirts though now. Oh, there you go. <laughs> I love my Hawaiian shirts. I heard <laughs> that's the big thing in Europe right now. Uh, <laughs> you know, like the '70s. You know, Hawaiian shirts. <laughs> Well, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's <laughs> just great fun hearing these guys. And um, I know you guys are saying, Norm, shut the fuck <laughs> up. You know, can you guys just play something else here? We're going to do it right on the spot. Nothing that's worked out. I'm going to just throw you guys into the fire. Um, just, cool. just do something, you know. And uh, Smokey's playing this beautiful Super 400 yeah. with Alnico pickups. And... Uh, my buddy Kirk is playing a 52 telly. It's a player grade telly, but it's really player grade and sounds really player grade in the, in the best way. So uh, it's a black guard. And uh, so uh, so what can you guys uh, rig up for me right now? Oh, yeah. It's like I don't have any ideas, <laughs> but uh, you got an idea? Or <laughs> you just play a shuffle. Sure. Norm's favorite. Right? Okay. Shuffle. Let's do a shuffle. <laughs> I want. Uh, are we are we gonna pick a key or, or you, uh, you start it? You start B one flat. Out. All right, all right. Thank you. 
feeling so low down I got the buggy wuggy blues and I'm feeling so low down I got the buggy wuggy blues cause my baby's not around Well, we boogie last night and we boogie the night before. When my baby gets home, you know we're gonna rock some more. I'm going down to the railroad track Like a mountain jack I'm running down to the railroad track I'm gonna call that train Gonna call my baby back Ah, here we go Mr. Brakeman, come on back. Stop that train in the middle of the track. I want my boogie. I want my boogie. I ain't had no boogie since my baby's gone. I take me home. Hey, let me just ask you, what kind of fuzz tones were you guys using? <laughs> <laughs> fuck those, fuck those fuzz tones. Man, this is the way a guitar is supposed to sound. You know, guitar don't need any of that crap, you know? I mean, you know, listen, for, there, there's a reason to use a fuzz tone here and there. The man, you know, when everybody started using fuzz tones on everything, I was kind of going, you know, listen, satisfaction and all that, great, you know, but you yeah, know, you enough the, is enough. The you know? maestro fuzz, that's that's yeah. the real answer. Yeah, that's right. what yeah. satisfaction is. Yeah. The maestro, right. that's the fuzz. I shouldn't have said that because now they'll be even more expensive. Right, but the thing is, is that, you know, in the right place, it's a cool effect. And it's like any yeah. effect that if you use it too much, it ruins it. And I hear all these guys, and every time they're, I hear their guitar sound, it just sounds like, uh, an angry bee and man when you hear these guys playing with a straight ahead guitar into an amp no effects just good tone and good notes well good it, guitars. you know it, it was tom tom waits used to say you know every once in a while if, if it was too clean you know mm. he'd say make it sound give me that electrocuted cat sound yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's when that. you need the old maestro for yeah. us <laughs> <laughs> well, I, again, I am so honored to have these guys, um, two of the greatest players, um, Smokey from uh, New York now. And where are you playing in New York? How, I how? play every week at a place called Sonny's Bar in Red Hook, Brooklyn. I have a great little uh, Western swing, uh, well, it's a trio and me, fiddle, bass, and drums, and myself. That would make it a quartet. That makes it a quartet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sometimes we, we, there's a lot of cool musicians pop in, you know, sometimes LA I'm guys, Kirk, if you're in oh, New York man, on a Wednesday man, night, you got to come down to Brooklyn. And wow. The, the cool thing is we have a, a, it's a pretty loose joint and there's a lot of uh, dancing. 
So oh, that's playing really cool. for dancers is a whole other. You know, know what? That's that's how you know people are digging it. When you mm. know when you playing and people are kind of you know half of them can't even clap in time and stuff. You know when you see people dancing, <laughs> yeah. you know that that's what the music was. You know all those, those um, four, yeah. mm-hmm. barrel house places and all the you know the places that had the jukeboxes back in the day and people were up and dancing. You know they're having a good time. You know? Yeah, mm-hmm. it's like you know I always say you know at the jazz clubs the people clap politely and they're not even sure if it's good or bad when yeah. they're dancing. Uh, and you know that it's good. You know, and there's, so. there's, in general, there's always a shortage of men who are willing to dance. So yeah. if you're a, you know, a man out there and you want to have a good time, come to Sonny's and dance. <laughs> I nice guarantee lead. you'll have a good time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll make sure of it. That's yeah. my job. <laughs> uh, are you gonna, are you gonna do the hookup? You know, are you gonna set them up or no? How late well, do you play? We uh, we play till midnight. Oh, okay. Uh, sometimes we go a little over. But yeah. Yeah. Play from like nine to midnight. So. And you will be going to New York kind of yeah, soon. I'm playing but, the Iridium um, in October third. I won't be back yet. Darn. The sixteenth is my next first time. gig back. Yeah. So. Next time. Yeah. Sure. Next You're time. waiting for the crap weather. You want to go back? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> no, no, right. no, no. I'm trying to be so blunt. I love New York. I'm an East Coast guy. I'm from Philly. But yeah. what? What the hell? You I know? think the summer is worse than the winter. Myself. Yeah. Uh, the summer right. in New York is brutal. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, you got humidity now yeah, too, yeah. right? Yeah. And rain. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, I just want to say it's my honor having these guys, and thank you guys for doing this podcast. And uh, you know, check it out. Um, you you can hear it like you're hearing it right now, and then you can see it if you'd like to see it the following week on the next Tuesday, exclusively on the All Guitar Network. And I thank my buddies Dylan and Mark Rivette, you know, for making this all happen. And, uh, you know, I'm so excited to be able to do this because I really get a chance to kind of spend a little time with my old friends and kind of, you know, really get into it and and really get to hear some great playing and just the stories and the history and all that and you know talking about the people you know getting some of these young people to be hip to some of these uh people that are no longer with us yeah and and there's still a few that are left that are like james gadson and oh man we got to go you know check them out while they're with us because they're they're really great (laughs) absolutely well once again the great smoky hormel and the great Kirk Fletcher. Thank you for listening to the podcast, and we'll see you at the All Guitar Network. No, 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 no,